Yeah, hello. I hope you can hear me okay, because I don't have anybody yet to test my microphone. Looks pretty good level-wise. So what I want to do today is have a look at um, the Foundry VTT system, which somebody has put together. Simon Simon Hill, I think um, his name is, he's put this together and put it available for free. So it's a fan system, means it doesn't come with any other content and um, it should allow you to play the game nonetheless. So what I want to have a look is I want to port some of the characters I've made with my group. Um, previously we've been played on, playing on Roll and I want to put them into Foundry and I want to set them up, just show you how the system works roughly. Um, this is very much me stumbling through it. So if you've got questions, please do ask. If you have comments, pop them in. And as, as always, I don't normally mention this, but subscriptions are really liked. Liked are really likes and comments as well. It makes us go. So let's have a look at the system then. I started a little bit setting this up already. Um, this is on my local Raspberry Pi running here. Um, so let's load in. Go. So on the on the left here, I've got my foundry. On the right, just by my head, I've got the um, the section from Roll that basically has the character sheets on it. And this is Kalen Porter, and I want to introduce him and set up a character for him on the other system. So as you can see, I already set up some some maps here from the book. This is uploaded myself, so it doesn't come with it. I also have a map of London, yeah, which is okay. It's not the highest resolution. It does break up a little bit if you zoom right in. So, sent for London. I always think that this, uh, the graphic style of this isn't really 2000s. It looks a bit more like 1960s or 70s, maybe. But it's pretty. Just, uh, I think it would fit better with troubleshooters than it does here with this game. We have um, Stone Waters Bookshop, which is from the uh, the first case, the case of the flying books or whatever it's called. I can't remember the, its official name. So, and we've got the folly. So. I'm going to take London as a, as a backdrop while we do this. Um, so, character sheets. Basically, what does it come with? If you look at the compendium, you get a shorter list of advantages here. These are, however, just samples. They're not actually the advantages or disadvantages from the book. They're just sample setups, so you can see how that works. Uh, you get armor. You get two entries for it. Not a lot. You get skills, and these are the basic skills and not the expert skills. And if you click into any of them, you see their basic setup, but there's no description in it. So the, the textual content from the rule books is not there, but Chaosium at least gave the, the permission to have the names in there. Then we have um, the spell sets up. Again, they're just templates. First, second, third, and so on. Spells, so you can see how that all works. And we've got some weapons, but really um, only throwing a can of beans. Excellent. Um, very few. So we don't actually have, for example, the police button here, the night stick or whatever they call it. Um, the rest is from other systems. So when you set up a character, basically you are faced with an empty character sheet. So let's create a new one. And this one is going to be Kalen, Kalen Porter. Porter. And I'm just transposing him from, from um, roll onto this one, so I don't have to start quite over. So you see this character sheet here, it's got the tabs, magic traits, it's got the categories in it, but basically very little in it. Even the skills are not in it. And I probably would put the, the common skills in it. Um, don't know whether you're going to watch this, Simon, but maybe that's something you can do quite easily. Um, you then have the options, of course, of having a picture. So let's start with a picture. Tokens, rivers, I uploaded some of them already. So that's good. There you go. Nice little picture for him. So, um, the next thing I stumbled over was, of course, okay, I want to put the attributes in. And you click on here and you can roll attributes. Okay. But I'm sure about how to edit them, yeah? So the key is not this lock, which I fell for initially. It is on the left-hand side, you have to go to the GM tools and you have to put it into character creation mode. That basically allows everybody now to edit, uh, edit their characters. And that makes the difference. So... Now I can actually go across to my roll sheet and see, all right, what has he got? And just key these in. That's 40, constitution 30, stays the same, dex is 60. And these are slightly reduced if you know Call of Cthulhu. These there are a few fewer than here. I'm not an expert, but I play Call of Cthulhu regularly. So you get the handy total on the side to say, okay, you've got your 270 total attribute points. You can play higher or lower powered ones. Hey Kai, how are you doing? 
Good to see you again. Um, so the next thing I have on my sheet here on the right are the common skills. So the common skills I can go and that you can import the compendium, as I said, from here, right click on it and import it. And I will put them down as items. I already started putting some extra ones in. So common skills, these are the ones everybody has. What you can do is you can just grab the whole folder, toss it across here, and then you've got the common skills. You get a couple of extras that you don't really need at the bottom. And to get rid of them, you can then unlock them and change them here. So I've got Athletics 30, I've got Drive 30, I've got Navigate, Observation, Read Person is the first one that needs adjusted. 60. So Research doesn't need anything. Sense Vestigia, oh, oh, 60. Sense Vestigia needs 60. And is that it? I don't think that's right. That can't be right. That he's only got two common skills raised. Oh dear. Didn't really look at that at the time. So the next thing that's adjusted, the next thing I've got is occult history science tech. He's got far too many advanced skills. Irish Gaelish, you can say that. It's Gaelic, really. Gaelic. So if I wanted to now say, okay, I want a science specialism, I can then set them up. Science is not on my list yet, so I'll have to, uh, there's a sample expert skill, which I can copy, of course, uh, but I can also set it up from scratch. So I created myself a new folder here with a couple of expert skills. Click on here, say, okay, I want occult, first of all. Occult. So here you select skill, expert skill, and then you have this one. You need to click up here. These are toggles, expert. You can then say, okay, skill chance at the beginning is 30. I think if you get the skill, you always get over 30. Um, I have to admit, it's been a while since I read the book. Um, yeah, I'm okay. Guys, thanks for asking. I'm just enjoying my holiday now. So that might already be enough. That might be all you need. You can, of course, go into here and you can select an icon. So Foundry comes with an, a few built-in icons. If you want the sort of SVG thing and you say occult, occult, okay, what could I use for occult? Have I got some demon or something? That looks quite cool. So you can adjust these or you can find a nice token set that you like and do that. But if I, you wanted the, the description in it, um, let me open the PDF here on the site. You can then go to skill list and find the expert skills, go to occult. And here's a little trick that I do copy and pasting. Um, I've shown this before, but it's many, many moons ago. So you may not know it. Oh, occult is here. Occult. So you grab the whole thing. That's it. Control C. I then go into Notepad++. There's this little, little window here. Paste that in. And that basically allows you to strip out the formatting. So you select the lines that belong together. Control J to join them up. Pushing examples, if you want all of this, of course. Then select all, Control A, Control X to cut it, and then you paste it in here. The window isn't quite big enough, and you might have to adjust a little bit of line breaks. Um, for example, if this here is a heading, you can actually go in and put this uh, heading in it. But in the small box it's going to be, and it's going to be really hard to see. And now I put the heading for the whole thing. That shouldn't be a heading. So let's take the heading back off. And if I save it now. Yeah, okay. A couple more line breaks. We want a line break there. And one behind there. Then I can call this heading three again. Save it. Then you get a bit of a text there. So now this skill I've configured on my list. And I can just pull that across. And you see he's got a cult 30. Let's go back to my... Um, Character sheet for him. So, okay, what I'm just showing is um, this Foundry system, which is a fan based system for Rivers of London. And on the right, I've got um, Roll, which I used beforehand to run it. And on the left, I've got Foundry. So, I'm transporting my characters across. So, 60. That needs to be 60. Let's just um, grab the sample expert skill. Don't really need that. And the special in. To take that out as well. So the next thing I need is history. 
And you can see it's not terribly exciting to do this, but if you want to play it and there's no official Foundry pack available, then that's what you have to do. Cool. Of course, if you say, I've got the rule book anyway, I don't need all this. Now you can just say, okay. Um, grab it, done. You don't have to do everything, copy and paste. Now the next one is science, that's a specialism. So that means I have an overall science, skill called science. It's an expert skill, but it has specialization. You can then see parent skill name here. Um, oh, is that the other way around? Is that how it works? Let's see what it looks like when I put it across and he's got 60 in that. So if I pull that across, it now says science. But I can't edit it. Hmm. So I have to create the different sciences myself, do I? So if I put here science, physics. It might be exactly the other way around. We'll find out in a minute. And then I put this across. Science, physics. And that one needs to go. Don't know how I can get rid of that. Science, physics. That's how it should be. And then you can enter here the um, 60. Next one is tech. Tech skill. And for, the, for playing, you don't always have to have all the rule system text in it. So that's absolutely fine. Tech. Put it across. And put a skill value in of 20. As you can see, expert skills don't always start at 30. So it's probably a good idea to keep them at zero. And we've got art and craft, which is a specialization of photography. So again, we have art and craft. Skill. No, no, Rivers of London is not PBTA. It's basically a role-playing game. Um, BIP. So it's like Cthulhu, like RuneQuest, like yeah, BIP by itself. I don't think it's PBTA at all. So I don't know whether I'm doing this right. Yeah. Art and craft. If I do it like this, what happens? Close. So I put art and craft across. And then I can adjust it down here. That's probably how to do it. So I don't have to have them all. Auto, ra, B. And that's going to be 60. He's our uh, paranormal specialist, this guy. So language, I already had one. Specific language. English. And he's got, what has he got for English? 80. And he wants Gaelic. I have to see how that works. If I put another language on it now. Which confusingly is under normal skills. Ah, that's how it works. So. Gaelic. And he's got Gaelic of 40. He probably thinks it's a good idea to, to speak Gaelic. And then we've got computer use, which is pre-configured by myself. 20. So I now have skills that I needed. Is there anything extra? That's science I need to get rid of somehow. Not quite sure how I'm going to rid of it. Rid me myself of that. Right, what's next? Luck points. Um, he has 51 luck at this point. And what else do we have? We've got his name. We've got his occupation, which I can copy and paste. That lets me. Yeah. Born in Belfast. Northern Ireland, lives in London. I haven't settled on the year yet, so rather than putting an age in, I'm just going to put his birthday in. And pronouns, because it's a modern game. He, him. So that is pretty much the character stuff done. There's the attributes and skills. We still have some more. No, that's all done, all done. Fighting, we have to enter. 30 and 30, that's fine. And then his contacts. So the next thing you can do is magic. He, I don't think he needs one of magic. That's fine. Contacts. Just edit them manually. So you can put po um, pictures in if you like. So Leonard Porter. 
Uh, he's the father. And you can see that these uh, can be secure as sour, these relationships. I can't remember what we said at the character creation, so I'll leave that empty. And we'll have Arthur Stone. Arthur Stone. So, relationship physics professor. All right. Rivers of London, I actually have put a couple of actual plays on that. So it's a new venture of mine, Kai. I put some, some podcasts on YouTube, basically taking all the pictures out. It's just one, one picture. And then you can listen to it. And I believe you should be able to listen to it through the music app, YouTube music app. Um, which means you can put it in the background and still listen to it. So, the rest is equipment. Oh, he's got so much stuff. Do I need all of this? No, no, no. Doesn't matter. An EMF magnetic field detector. Is that something anybody else is going to have? If so, you can put it in equipment here. Um, magnetic field detector. Equipment, and you can see it's just an entry field. So there's really nothing there. You can put it across a dowsing rod. Again, nobody else will have that, so I'll just add it straight here. That's always something you can do. You can also see it's not really graphically styled. The guy who's doing it I had a good chat with him. He's a developer, he's not a graphic designer. Infrared thermal imager. Nobody else is going to ever have one of those. Infrared thermal imager. Right, next. And I'm going to do one character, then I'll have a look at some other stuff. Handheld recording equipment. Again, that's just for him. Handheld recording equipment. They've just um, they've been through two cases. This group. One is out in London. One is in Wales. So we've done that, and then there's a bit more biography. So he lives in London by himself. I can go into this present here. He lived in Belfast. His old childhood. <laughs> hey, Paul, good to see you. It's not very artistic, is it? But with a bit of style sheet, I'm sure you could do something on this one. CSS. You're good at CSS. I've seen it. Better than me, anyway. Good to see you, Paul. So, um, that is now, I think, really everything we need for one character. Just scrolling through on the right-hand side. Is there anything I forgot? Oh, yes, the advantages. I need to cre create those. So if you look in here, there's basically nothing in there. They're just templates. So if you create steadfast, and I don't think they're in any way um, automated. So again, go back to the PDF. Advantages, where were they? Um, boom, boom, boom. Page 50 something. Pretty sure it was page 50. Hop to page 50. Yeah, that's where they are. Step three advantages. How's that for memory? Scary. Signature weapon. Steadfast. So this is the steadfast advantage. So I'm going to do my, my little step again, which Paul, of course, will laugh at because he's much better at using the tools than this. But joining and copying text up. So... Have a look at this. Is there anything you need? You need a requirement of uh, power of 60. So that's again something you can enter in here. This is an advantage effect. What is the effect of it? Mm, does not suffer impairment as a result of these things. Is that one of the predetermined things? I don't think it is. So I'll leave that empty. Uh, prerequisites, there is one prerequisite, so A, and the prerequisite is a characteristic minimum value of power of 60. 
So you can see how that's coded in, so there's some sense checking whether you qualify for it or not. So I can then pull this across, and it will show up under Traits, under Steadfast. That's one of them. Do you remember the other one? I don't. What else did you have? Fast reactions. So we create another new advantage. Fast reactions, and I think that's something we do with initiative memory. Advantages. Yeah, Paul, you played this with me on roll as well, didn't you? You played um, this game with me. What did you make of it, Paul? Because I ran the same scenario three times. Fast. There it is. Fast reactions. Not sure I have yet. Oh, we have played this, haven't we? Pretty sure we played this. Rivers of London together. On roll. Unless you're a different Paul Watson. Played Dragon Dragonbane. Uh, maybe I'm confusing things, because I have played this with people. In English. I have recordings of it. I thought you were in it. I need to check out my YouTube channel now. <laughs> Right, we have a re re requirement of, what was it, Dex 60. So, Dex 60. What do you make of the implementation Simon made here? Paul is an expert who develops these sort of systems. So, fast reactions. Boom. So, I think that's two characters done now, or three. So I can then in, a, exit my character creation mode up here. Yeah, that locks it. And you can see the you've got the full value and the half value. They they got away with the fifth of the value. Did away with that one. You can just have a dice roller here. And say so you get a bonus die. Roll the dice. Here they come. And then it says, it's a success. And you can either spend luck uh, or not. Played from the chat card. So that's quite neat. That's quite Nice to have that one. You like clear sheets? Yeah, it is clear. There's nothing cluttered. And the only uh, artistic touch is really this little, I guess it's the River Thames. And then Falcon Operative Experience Assessment. It says up there. So, um, what is quite neat in a way is, and I haven't really, I don't remember all of this because it's been a while since I went through this with Simon a few weeks. You have these... Um, injury effects here. So if you have a damage of one, for example, and you're hurt, damage of two, you're bloodied, and then all of a sudden you get the effects that you're impaired, which means you have a disadvantage on everything you roll. If you're three, you have down. So the more damage you take, basically, you've got a mortal wound now, uh, a fatal wound, you can see how the effects come on. And you can also say you're hurt or you're bloodied, or yeah, you can click them on and off here. Um, you have hyperthaumaturgical, hyperthaumaturgical degradation. So that basically means you're uh, starting to suffer from using too much magic. Doesn't apply to this guy because he doesn't have magic. If you're trying to create spells, by the way, and I have one ca uh, character here with some spells, Randall. Um, make sure you give him an advantage of magic. And when you configure this advantage of magic, let me show you that. Um, magical, it's called. You have to put the advantage effect of magic on. If you don't do that and put it on the character sheet, you can't put any spells on the character sheet. So there is some um, some good way of dragging and dropping this on, but it will just say you're not eligible, you're not meeting the requirements, and finding out what the requirement is. Uh, took me a moment. Let's put it that way. Which is having the right advantage configured correctly. Because I just put magical on, but I didn't do that box. I forgot this box. I just put these things in. Right. I'm not quite sure what the icon does either. Hmm. Won't be that, but... Is that magical? That's magical. No, it doesn't do anything. So. 
Um, there is some fighting on this one. There is some initiative and so on. And you've got these different modes. As I said, you've got the end of session phase where you get a pop-up to say how many uh, development points do you want to award for everybody. Um, you've got the development phase, which basically allows this, uh, the, the characters to do something in their development phase, spend points, development points. You've got the character creation phase and you've got the party initiative order. Um, and on here, you basically say who's going to go first, second, third. So it's manual. Um, but once you've done that, oh, no. Let's try that again. I now have them on my map. These characters. A bit brighter. Um, and put them into combat. That should now give them the right order. I haven't tested this yet. Hmm. Maybe not. Don't know how to do that one yet. Can't show you that, but I'm pretty sure that there were um, ways of targeting and attacking. She has a weapon. Let's say. She wants to use her firearms. Semi-automatic weapon. So if I click on this, you have targeted another character which may injure them. Yeah, of course I'm going to proceed. That's the whole point. And then you have the choices as in Cthulhu, single shot. Damage bonus, attack bonus, okay. And difficulty. Roll dice. So let's see what happens there. That should be enough. Roll damage. Resolved. Cover protection value. You can enter. Oh, lots of little things you can do here. Dun, 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 two damage. And then I can cause damage. And let's see whether he should now have two damage. Let's have a look. I don't see any damage on Kalen. Okay, maybe that doesn't quite work yet. Just says resolved. Well, that's how it should work anyway with targeting. Um, but he's not damaged, he's healthy. He should be bloodied. Alright. So, that's that bit. Um, spells, configuring spells is quite tricky. We can maybe pick out a spell. Um, what spell do you fancy? Do you know anything about Rivers of London? You can ask me. Clausura Frange or something. Let's go to spells over here. Let's use something simple first. Aqua. So if you want to uh, create a spell in here, you find your spells. And you can import the templates. Yeah, but the other ones I've done myself. So if I, for example, have Aqua as a spell, you can create your little icons, as I said. And then you've got three things for each spell. I'm not going to use Notepad for that. You have the name, prerequisites, none, then what it is, what it does when it's boosted. You need to know that. And then you've got a quote from the book, um, which I'm going to get rid of, because in the little fields that would be a bit much. So prerequisites, you can, as you can see, you can choose something, but you can't actually choose none, so you need to leave that empty. And damage, I don't think it does actually cause any damage at all. No. Save that. That's an easy spell. Spell order one, first order, that's all good. Close that off. If you now want to do a second order spell, let's go for water bomb. Water bomb. Water bomb. And you can enter this spell. That's a, there's a drop down here. It's a bit annoying interface wise, but it only gives you one. But you can key in two. So why have a drop down? That's what I want to know. Um, water bomb, water bomb. Noise maker, rock drill. Snap. Shouldn't water bomb before we be before wear light? Ask because of second order. I need to scroll further down. Yeah. Impello. 
Your brain is failing. Yeah, see, I did run it for you. Yeah, yeah, Paul. <laughs> I'm glad it was so memorable. Uh, clearly, you must have enjoyed it immensely. Now I have to watch it to, to remember what we did. So I have Aqua and Impello. So if I want to prerequisite here, I then go in here and say it's A and B. Right, so then I need to spell, but I can't pick the spell here, I think. Can I? No, I have to put it in. Aqua and spell Impello. I don't think there's any logic checking this, but we can give it a go. So this is the effect. The boost. And you can use bullet points, of course. What's the best layout about there? That's why I normally use Notepad for anything longer. So, that reads okay, doesn't it? So this Aqua and Impello you need. And for example, K, well, he's the magic one. If I look at his spells, he has uh, Impello, but he doesn't have Aqua. So let's see. If I drag this spell onto him with the requirement of uh, Aqua, it should bounce back, but it doesn't. So the, the logic isn't really there to check that. It's just for information. Right. So that's how you enter a spell. Um, what else do you want to know? Do you want to see anything else? How it's implemented? Doesn't come with any uh, rollable tables at all. Uh, it does come with no scenes. I put them in. So basically, yeah, it's a really good basic implementation which allows you to play it. I certainly like Foundry a lot. And having a um, boundary version of this hopefully will help us play it a bit more. Roll is pretty good as well, don't get me wrong. I enjoy roll, but as soon as you have maps or you have more than one, three, four, five handouts, it gets a bit messy. So on here, for example, there are some handouts which I would create as journal entries. So handouts. Not a lot, but there's something about writing and things. So this is called... I can't remember what the case is called. I just called it Flying Books. Stone Waters, I think it's called. Add a page, and then you can choose what sort of page it might be. I can't remember what it is. There's something about cockfighting. And because it's a pre-existing image, I'm just going to choose image. Um, go to user data Wells, Rivers of London, um, create a subfolder, handouts, in handouts, hopefully I can find it now, downward, uh, handout one, handout two, handout three. And while I'm here, just going to upload them all. And there are some pictures, might as well put them in here. It's not necessarily how I would organize my, my file system, but I just want to be, to be quick. So, um, there we go. It's now there. And you can then right click on it and you can share it, show it to players from here. So if there's another one, and then which was witness statement. Saffron Jones, I think she was called. Doesn't matter. Again, make an image. Uh, Jackson, not Jones. I'll just call it statement. Otherwise, it gets too long. Save entry. There's the next one. And this is 
easier to organize than role is. Yeah, the, the way handouts work. So, um, statement Anderson. I don't remember his first name. Oh, that's text now. You can actually put an image into this as well. Um, just an extra click. I don't think it makes any difference, does it, Paul? Warwick. Yeah, of course. Yeah, thank you. Uh, you can multi-select and you can, the noise thing is, uh, you can create straight from a PDF. You can go straight in. So if I wanted to um, have another handout here, I could create an, another one. And out PDF. Go to PDF here, create a page. Go into my folder. Um, of course, I ripped them all from PDFs. So there's one here actually called GM Maps and Plane and Rivers of London Investigators, NPC Portraits, Play Handouts as a PDF. I can just to show it. I go in here, load the PDF, and then you have the statements. Times two. Twice bookshop, handout one. Okay, that's their twice. That's their twice as well. And you've got the map and you've got the spell list. So this is actually useful for, for accepts from rules, I guess like the spell list. But I would actually want to carve this up for my, my players. I'll just take that out. But yeah, very good call. Thanks for the reminder, Paul. So, flying books. What else could I show you? Um, there are some rollable tables. Um, but, yeah, this is not a basic thing, is it? Not a basic... Yes, how you do everything in your in your boundary. That's not the aim of today. It's more the idiosyncrasies of this game. So remember, if you want to, you can't do something you're trying to do. Um, check this GM tools icon on the left, um, and that should then. How do you click that away? How do you disable that? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how to disable that. <laughs> right. Where was I? So this should allow us, as I said, to, to at least play it properly with a dice roller. If I go back to the characters for a moment, just to show you the, the dice roller again, you can do athletic rolls. You can then choose, for example, I want a difficult roll. I will then take the half value up here. So you're not rolling against um, athletic strength 30, but you're actually rolling against 15. And that's why a 77 is not there. But you can spend luck if you have enough for hard success. Or you can push the roll. Pushing the roll. Which is still a failure because it's more than 15. So I would have to come up with something good as a consequence now. It's interesting. There was a, a video just out by Chaos themselves uh, yesterday, I think, about explaining how they want to use luck and the way you, they use, use luck. And there's something new in the system called Try Your Luck. Which basically means if you're trying to use a skill that you don't have, you can spend some luck to do so. And if you are lucky and it's useful and you roll again, then you can actually learn a skill like that. You can learn a skill uh, in the field, if that is, if you like, rather than having to study for it. But you have to spend luck for it. Luck does come back a bit quicker than in Stana Cthulhu, though. Especially if you're a demi monde character. I think it resets once a day. At a, set, at a set time. So that must be pretty sweet. So, have I, am I scraping the barrel yet? Probably. Um, yeah, anything else you want to, to look at? My dear watchers. I don't think so. That was, that was about... Yeah, the skills, as I said, they come up. Advantages, yeah. Showed you how to configure those expert skills, showed that. Weapons, there's not a lot to it. If you create a button, basically you say what sort of blade it is. Vorpal blade, okay. Um, whether it's melee thrown or firearms, this governs which uh, skill it uses, damage and range. I think they're purely for, um, for flavor. 
or information, I should say. Equipment. Yeah, I still have to experiment a little bit with the advantages. Um, so advantage that require a spell. Yeah. You need to type a spell and be careful and ensure that you get the exact name with the correct case. So it should actually have done that for the spell earlier. For Aqua. And it should not have allowed me to pull this, this spell on. So let's have a look at that. Spells. Templates. Second order spell with a requ prerequisite. But it must be mastered spell mastered. Yeah. Didn't do that. Didn't check that logic. But hey, players have brains, GMs can play, uh, have brains. You don't need to automate everything, right? So, I think that's probably me rambling on enough for now. How long have we been on? 42 minutes for a short explanation. Um, I really would like to, to run Rivers of London again. And Paul, seeing as you have played it, but you can't remember it, we can use the same scenario again. How about it? Hmm? Or would you rather play Blade Runner? discussed or oh, mutant year zero again like we did uh, last sunday that was good as well peter would be up for what for blade runner or for rivers rivers okay might do that again but again it's a game that i think ben works best with two to four players not necessarily six so we have to see how that fits into our schedule Anyway, I think I'm going to take this to a close. Um, if you haven't subscribed yet, you know what to do. If you haven't followed yet, yeah, or YouTube later on, leave a comment or a like or something. Yeah, I'll happily take any Prime subscriptions that are going free as well. Yeah, I get for every one of those, I get about one dollar. So, first money I've ever earned from streaming. Okay. At that point, after that commercial shilling, I will probably. Just say goodbye for now. Have a good afternoon. And I'm going to practice some more music now. Farewell. <laughs>